In designing structures, some design procedures require including an initial imperfection that includes sturdy sway. In this example, I will modify my model to include a frame out of plumbness of H over 500. Now there are two basic ways to do this. One is early on in the model creation process, or the other would be after the model has actually been fully created, and then we can modify it by updating the geometry. We're going to take a look at the first option of um, just modifying the geometry early on. So at this point, we have a rough model defined, and it's important to note that we have not yet subdivided the columns into multiple elements. So it's important that if you're going to use this procedure, you do the geometry imperfection before you do the subdivision. So let's get started. So what we'll do is under geometry, we'll select move node. We can start on either floor. Let's say we start on this floor here. So I'll select node three and node four. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna input the amount of frame sway I want at that location. In my example, the first story is 12 feet tall and the second story is 10 feet tall. So I'd like to have an H over 500 for the first story. So down in the delta X, I'll type in that I wanna move this thing uh, basically 12 feet times 12 inches per foot divided by 500. I've selected the two nodes on the floor and then I'll go over and hit apply. Now you might not have been able to see it because it's such a small amount of initial imperfection, but nodes three and four did move over a bit to the right. So now the initial plumbness has been included for the first story. Let's go on and do it for the second story. Now, as I indicated, we're using an H over 500. So we'll go to the top of the frame and select node five and node six. And then the amount we want these to move is the first story was 10 feet tall. I'm sorry, the first story was 12 feet tall. The second story was 10 feet tall for a total of 22 feet. So we'd like to move this, these two points over 22 times 12 inches per foot divided by 500. And then we'd hit apply. Again, the uh, H over 500 imperfection is so small that you really can't see it. But we could go back under geometry and look at the nodal coordinates of those two stories, and we could confirm that in fact we've moved the frame over by H over 500. So let's do that. So we would select geometry, information, node, and then say click on node three, and look at the coordinates down at the base. We can see that the X coordinate for node three is 0.288, and that is in fact H over 500, uh, which again, that first story was 12 feet tall, um, or 144 inches divided by 500 is 0.288. We can now take a look at the coordinates for node five by clicking on it and having a look down at the base. In this case, we can see that the X coordinate for node five is 0.528, which is 22 feet times 12 inches divided by 500. So at this point, we've included an initial imp uh, imperfection, including frame sway in our model of H over now, as I indicated earlier, uh, there is an alternative way to include the sway imperfection. Um, this would be used when, for example, you've got the frame all completed, uh, you've subdivided all the members into several elements, and now you wanna go back and include that initial frame sway. Note that move, using the mood node option under the geometry uh, would be pretty tedious to do because you'd have to move all the nodes uh, going up the column height. So another way to do that is to remove all the loads from the structure. So we've got all the loads removed um, and we do have the support conditions that we'll be uh, checking for. So, um, so what we're gonna do here is actually put a imperfection in the structure, run an analysis and then update our geometry. So let's do that. So we would select conditions and define displacement settlements. Now it seems strange to be defining displacement settlements uh, what we're actually going to be doing is including prescribed displacements. So what we'll do is start up at the top of the frame, and I'm just going to select, let's say, one of the nodes here, say this node on the right. And the amount of displacement I'm going to require that that node move is just some factor, let's say 10, and later we'll scale off of that 10-inch displacement. So to include that, I'd hit Apply. Now I've got uh, a 10 inch prescribed displacement at the top. And if you work proportionally from the bottom of the structure to the top, 
um, at that first floor, we would want uh, 12 20 seconds of that 10 inch deflection. So again, at 22 feet, we put in the 10 inch deflection. And at 12 feet, we would want a proportional amount so it was uniform of H over 500 up the height. So that's what we'll do. So let's clear the list. Select the node we want to move. And again, the amount that we're going to type in down here is um, 12 divided by 22 multiplied by 10. And then we'd hit apply. Our next step then would actually be to perform the analysis and get that deformed shape from which we can scale off of. So to do this, we'll just select analysis and first order elastic. Down at the base, we'll change it from a space frame to a planar frame, and then we'll hit apply. So now the analysis is complete, and let's have a look at the results. So we'll select results, diagrams, deflected shape, and then we'll hit apply. And you can see the uh, deformed shape has been scaled by a factor of 10, plus we had 10 inches of deflection on there. So this frame has really moved over quite a bit. But all we really needed was just a shape. We're now going to scale off that sh shape and update the geometry. To do this, we'll go under results and update geometry. At this point, we can pick either node, the mid-height node or the, the top of the frame, and we can use that to scale off of this deformed shape. So in this case, let's use the top node. So I'll select the top node. So down at the bottom, it says node six. The degree of freedom I want to scale off of is in the X direction. The value that I want up there is 22 feet times 12 inches per foot divided by 500. And then I'd hit apply. And now the geometry of my frame has been updated to include an H over 500 uh, proportionally at that middle story and up at the top story. And again, we can go back and confirm this using the geometry node information option and see that that first story has been moved over by H over 500 and that the top of the frame has also been moved over by H over 500. So these are the two options for including an initial frame imperfection.